without say Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your desire. Thank you, Lord, for the impact of your word on every heart. We're praying, O oh Lord, as we come today and study your word, none of us will be a spectator in Jesus' name. Our hearts, our minds will not be roaming about will concentrate on what we're learning today and this word will make us the stronger in our Christian lives in Jesus name bless everyone without exception thank you Lord for the answer in Jesus name we pray God bless you you can sit down we're coming to the study of the word of God tonight and we're still in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, the last chapter of the epistle. And we're reading today from chapter 16, verse 13. It says, please open your Bible, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. And then it says in verse 14, let all your things, everything you do, at home, at work, by yourself, with other people, in the church, in the ministry, in fellowship, everything you do, let all your things be done with charity. Now he's going to give us a beautiful example. In verse 15, I beseech you, I plead with you, I'm begging of your brethren, ye you know the house of Stephanas, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, the people that first came to the Lord, when Paul the apostle and his team went to that province of Achaia. And then it says that they, those people in the household of Stephanas, they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. And then in verse 16, that ye, Corinthians, that ye believers, that ye members of the church, submit yourselves unto such, not only unto Stephanas, not only unto the first fruits of the evangelistic outreach of Paul, not only those people identified in the household of faith, but to submit yourselves unto such, such evangelists, such preachers, such ministers, and such people who are consecrated, addicted to the service of the Lord, that ye you submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that you submit yourselves to everyone not just in the church at Corinth or the church in Jerusalem or the church at the headquarters here at the, the church everywhere that you, every one of you will submit to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth in the ministry today we're looking at the message purposeful courageous living for god's glory you're born again you're a child of god you have been brought out of the world and you are brought into the kingdom the gospel has reached you the gospel has turned you around you are converted you are now a new creature in christ old lifestyle is gone a new life has now begun you know you need to have the purpose for living and the courage for living you're still in the world the same temptations might still come and trials might still come persecution may even come the people who don't understand your conversion your consecration, your conviction, and your commitment, those people may put pressure on you. They want to draw you back. 
they want to get you back to your old vomit and this is the time for you to know that now because you are a member of the family of God you want to purposefully decide and diligently pursue your living new life to the glory of God that's why Paul the Apostle as the Spirit leads him to conclude or bringing the epistle to a conclusion it says watch ye don't close your eyes and be walking about open your eyes watch don't just look around as an aimless pilgrim watch and don't just stand in one place not thinking not knowing what is coming your way the tempter is nearby and the old master is nearby he wants to drag you down he wants to pull you back he wants to pin you down and say you are going nowhere watch stand fast in the faith the faith that saved you you are saved by faith stand fast in that the faith that has cleansed you and watched you and purged you and made you a new creature that faith that makes transformation, power, purging, purity, sanctification to come into your life. Watch fast, stand fast in that faith. The faith that brings the power of God in connection with man. You are saved, you are sanctified, and now the power of the Holy Ghost has now come upon your life. That power can leak away if you are not standing fast in the faith. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Behave like a soldier and stand straight like a man, like a woman, like a person that stands in faith and the winds that blow will not be able to blow you down and shift you from your focus. Quit you like men. Be strong to live the Christian life. Be strong and to abide in the faith every time unto the end. Be strong to have conviction and to hold on to that conviction. Be strong and to earnestly, joyfully, cheerfully, happily, courageously contend. For the faith once delivered unto the saints be strong only then can you purposefully courageously live to god's glory we're looking at this passage under three perspectives number one watchfulness while standing fast in the faith number two willingness to serve faithfully without falsehood number three warm-heartedness of submissive followers to the false fruits to the false preachers to the people that pioneered the faith in your heart you are warm-hearted you are submissive you are a follower of the good, bright examples of those false fruits that have addicted themselves to the service of God. Number one is watchfulness while standing fast in the faith. Look at that again, First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Do you see three things there? Number one, stand fast in the faith. Number two, stay faithful with fortitude. Fortitude is the courage of heart. Is the firmness you have in your heart, in your mind. And you know that as you are standing by grace in godliness 
looking forward to the glory that shall be revealed. You have to stay faithful with fortitude. Number three, sustain firmness to the finish. As you are born again, as you are a child of God, and this one comes with suggestion, that one comes with suggestion, you are standing firm, you are staying firm, you are sustaining the firmness. But it's not just for one day, it's not just for one week, and it's not just for a period of time. Until the very end, to the finish. Look at number one here. Stand fast in the faith. Again, in that first Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Watch ye. Watch ye. Deceivers are around. Watch thee. Watch ye. False prophets are around. Watch ye. The people who are not going to the heavenly city, they are around, and they want to divert your attention, looking at things here on earth. Watch ye, those conversationalists that will engage you and try to make you think only of the world here. Watch ye. Now, texts are flying around. And they are sending this and sending that that will bring confusion of mind to the average person as to what you have learned. Watch ye in our lives, spiritual, emotional, family, profession, everything we do. If you have a goal and you have where you are going and where you want to reach, watch ye stand fast in the faith. Stand fast in the faith. You know, our life depends on our faith in God. Have faith in God. Our life depends on faith. You are saved by grace through faith. Our life depends on faith. By faith, ye stand. Our life depends on faith. You walk by faith. Our life depends on faith. The righteousness of faith that the Lord has given us. And we go from faith to faith. Now, if you're going to retain that faith by which you are saved. By which you are sanctified. By which you stand. Remember the question of Jesus. When the Son of Man cometh. Shall he find faith on the, on the earth? That's the reason why you need to take care, guard that faith, protect that faith, preserve that faith. Let your mind, your heart always be set on the Lord, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Stand fast in the faith. It tells us in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Watch unto prayer. You understand? If you're going to be strong, if you're going to abide, if you're going to remain focused as to the calling of God in your life, prayer is important. But prayer without faith will amount to nothing. It must be, it must be the prayer of faith. So you watch unto prayer. It tells us in Second Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 3, describing the time in which we live and the reason why you need to stand in the faith for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heave to themselves teachers having each in their ears this is the time you find a church there a gospel assembly there, a fellowship there, a gathering there, and whatever, by different names, 
But it says this is the time when people will not endure sound doctrine. The doctrine of repentance, they will not endure. That of restitution, they will not endure. And that of the restoration of the backslider, they will not endure. They will not endure the sound doctrine of regeneration, transformation, becoming a new creature in Christ. They will not endure the doctrine of one man, one wife, until death do us part. They will not endure the doctrine of following peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It says, therefore, watch ye and stand fast in the faith. After their own laws, they will heed to themselves. Teachers have been itching ears. Verse 4 tells us, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Yes, they have churches, they have ministries, they have fellowship, they have whatever religion, but they turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable storytelling. Now it says, here is what to do for you to watch and for you to stand fast in the faith. It tells us in verse 5, it says, but watch thou. In all things, watch thou. In all things, endure afflictions. Here is, this is the time in this world when people cannot bear any discomfort, any pain, any affliction, any persecution. If they take a decision, if they make a plan, and if they consecrate themselves, Lord, I'm going to follow you to the end. A little affliction will jolt them, disorganize them, and they will say, what am I going to do now? What you do now is to stand fast in the faith, endure afflictions. Sometimes some people get sick. And as they get sick, they pray a little prayer, 10 seconds, one minute. And then because the pain and the sickness has not gone immediately, then they say, what am I going to do now? You stand fast in the faith. You believe that God answers prayer. And that that affliction will not remain. But this at the time, people will run to herbalists. They run to occultic people. They run to those of another religion. And they run to those that have some things under their carpet. Because they cannot endure. And some people will even be carried into the house of those the Jew people but the Lord is saying that now you are a believer you are a child of God you will not die in the house of a herbalist I I will not die in the house of a herbalist let me say for you in Jesus name but you know People cannot stand fast. A little problem in their marriage. A little misunderstanding between husband and wife. I didn't know this is how marriage will be. I didn't know that there are thorns in my flowers. I didn't know that this is the conclusion of the whole thing. They cannot stand. Some of them will separate. Other people will divorce. Other people, they want, they want to go and marry another person. Stand fast in the faith. The faith you have. That the word of God is the word of God. And that the word of God changes not as God himself changes not. You watch in all things. You endure afflictions. Do the work 
often evangelists. I remember when we used to be in every bus in town preaching, evangelizing. I remember when we used to be at the bus stop, at the train station, anywhere we were, and then we had those tracks with us, evangelizing every time. Some of those people that used to do morning cry, and the people that used to do evangelism, and the people that went everywhere preaching the word, years gone by today, they have downed tools. They're not doing it anymore. But to abide in the faith and to stand fast in the faith, we do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. The Lord will help us. The Lord will help you. Jude chapter 1 verse 3. Jude chapter 1 verse 3. Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now remember, Jude was writing to the old assembly, to all the brethren, to all the members of the church, scattered everywhere. It wasn't just writing to a preacher, an overseer. Yes, writing to us, but to everyone. And it says, in our lives, with conviction and with courage, no matter the wind blowing around us, no matter what our closest friend no matter what our closest relations, what they are doing, that we, you and I, when we come to the crossroad, we earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. And I pray the Lord will help us. By His grace, He will help us. In His love, He will help us. And by the sustainers of the power of the Holy Ghost, it will help us in Jesus' name. That faith, the faith we're standing for. Standing for the things that Jesus stood for. And standing for the things that Jesus died for. Standing and standing firm lest we fall. We stand for that faith. The faith of the Lord Jesus Christ and the faith by which we live, that faith was delivered not to be adjusted, not to be modified, not to be changed, and not to be made to uh, fall in line with modernism, but the faith that was once delivered unto the saints that you anywhere you are that I anywhere I am and that whatever temptation or trial or difficulty or challenge may face us we earnestly faithfully courageously firmly contend for that faith once delivered unto the saints stand fast in the faith look at number two there number two is stay faithful with fortitude stay faithful with fortitude don't be caught empty in the heart don't be caught wavering in your heart don't be caught feeble in your heart you stay faithful with fortitude look at that first corinthians chapter 16 we're reading from verse 13 watch ye stand fast in the faith quit you like men like men that have backbone quit you 
like men, like men that have the strength and the power of the Holy Ghost sustaining them, which you like men, like men that have backbone. You see, the problem is, even though there are many churches in the land, in the country, there are many churches in your country, there are many churches in the continent, many of those members do not have backbone. They cannot stand. And they cannot say, here is my conviction. Here is what I believe. And give us chapter and verse in the Bible for what they believe. But it says, you quit like men. You stand like men. You're firm. You're faithful. And you're like men that can stand erect. Whatever wind is blowing Men, women, believers that have real backbone and nobody can bend that backbone, unbendable, uncrushable, unconquerable and unstoppable. That's what the Lord is telling us. Look at this in 2 Samuel chapter 10 verse 12. 2 Samuel chapter 10 verse 12. Be of good courage. If you don't have courage, you'll not have fortitude. You'll not have any backbone. You'll not have any conviction. Nobody can tell where you stand. But it is when you have the courage to live. And the courage to live like Christ would have lived if Christ were here today. Be of good courage. Let us play the main. For our people, pastors, let us play the men for our people. If we don't talk about repentance anymore, if we don't talk about restitution anymore, if we don't talk about being a new creature anymore, if we're not sharp, if we're not distinct, if we're not clear about the experience of salvation and the change and the transformation that comes after we are born again, our people be wishy-washy. They will not know the truth. They will not know whether they are born again or not. They will be claiming, some of them claiming they are born again when the work of grace has not been done in their lives, in their heart. It says, let us play the man. For our people and for the cities of our God. And the Lord do that which seemeth good unto him. You know what? We do the work. God does the miracle. We preach the gospel. And God does the conversion. Moses stretches the rod. And God opens the Red Sea. The priest carry the ark and they step on River Jordan. And God opens River Jordan. And the people give a shout. And God makes the Jericho walls to fall down. We play the main. We preach the gospel. We emphasize the word of the Lord. We reveal the possibilities of the grace of God to the people. And then God will do the rest. Let us play the main for our people. And for the cities of our God. And the Lord do that which seemeth him good. And let's look at First Timothy, Second Timothy rather. Chapter 2 verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus Verse 2, it says And the things when thou hast heard of me among many witnesses The same thing, the same That same word of salvation, the same that same word of holiness and sanctification, the same, that same word that tells us Christ is coming again. There will be the rapture of the church. After that, there will be the great tribulation. After that, 
the Lord will come to settle and establish his millennial reign. Don't change the word. Don't alter the word. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, thou therefore endure hardness. There is hardness connected with everything we do in life. Ministry, the ministry of the gospel, there's hardness, there's affliction, there are challenges connected with that. Even to live in your family, husband and wife, and to stay there, keep on loving, whatever challenges you face, there are things to endure, hardness, affliction, challenges in your place of work to be a professional and to do the work as expected there are challenges anything on, on earth anything you do in life there is hardness there are challenges there are trials there are pressures you can't just chicken out run away because of those challenges now therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And then in verse 4, it says, No man that warreth when he war. You war against the flesh. You war against the corruption in society. You war against the carelessness in the lives of people that surround you. You war against all the things that want to push you down and trample on you and walk over on you. You war on against the things that want to make you backslide. There is warfare and no man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier and then in verse 5 it says and if a man also strive for the masteries you know that's the problem with some people they don't strive for the masteries to be the best christian i can be strive for the masteries they don't strive for the masteries to be the best husband i can be the best wife I can be. The best worker in my office I can be. To be the best neighbor I can be. And to be the best representative of Christ I can be. They don't strive at that. They don't aim at that. They don't pursue that. But if we're going to please the Lord, we strive for the masteries you look at the details the essence the essentials of the christian life and then in your life you see that virtue that character trait that possibility that consecration i'm aiming for that and that is what makes us the best we can be if a man also strive for masteries Yet you see not crowned, yet you see not rewarded, except a strive lawfully. Let's come to number three here. Number three, sustain firmness to the finish. Sustain firmness to the finish. And you know, there are people. In their earlier days of the Christian life, they were firm. If you call them and you say, we have a festival, we have a party in the night, and we're going to be there just, just to be happy and to rejoice. In the earlier year, they said, no, I'm born again. The things I used to drink, I drink them no more. The things I used to wear, I wear them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. And all those things of the world, of the flesh, of laws, I used to have, I have them no more. They'll say no. But then, the higher they go, the cooler they become. The farther they go, 
the softer they become. They're no more strong. They can no more say no. And they cannot say this in the way they're looking at. If I say no now to this man, to this woman, and he's a rich man, and he's a popular man, and he has a lot of contacts. If I don't modify my conviction a little, I will miss or lose what I get from him. Their association with the people that the same matter in the world, their association has softened them. They just smile and he cannot say no, but the Lord is saying, be strong like you were in the earlier years, strong in your conviction, strong in what you believe, and strong and standing. Even if it makes you to lose some athletes, you know what you are standing for. You're not just saying yes, yes to everything, whether Christ approves it, approves of it or not. You sustain your firmness to the very end, to the finish. Look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 6 but Christ as a son over his own house whose house we are whose house are we if we hold fast on the condition we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end the Lord does not expect us to grow cooler, lukewarm, anemic, spineless. We don't know how to say no anymore. We're forgotten ourselves. We're mixing with the crowd. We're mixing with the religious people. And we have lost our ground. We have lost our focus. We're looking for something. Either we're looking for opportunities, or we're looking for office, or we're looking for money, or we're looking for business, or we're looking for just contacts. We're not looking for the conversion of the people and the new life in the people. Because of what we're looking for, we're not holding firm. But the Lord is saying that if we're going to be faithful to him until the end and remain part of his household, part of his family, we hold fast the confidence of our faith and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end we're told in joshua chapter one reading there from verse six joshua chapter one verse six be strong and of a good courage in the midst of the children of israel that caused so much trouble for moses before he left now joshua you are in their midst and they have not changed much so be strong i've given you a work to do i've given you an assignment to carry out you're going to take these people from this place to cross over to the land of promise be strong and of a good courage for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, only be thou strong if you're going to have a ministry, a ministry approved of God, a ministry appointed by God, a ministry that God will reward. You have to be looking at God all the time. If you're going to live a life approved of God, a life appointed by God. You have to be looking at God every time. If you are looking at this, by the way, you cannot please everybody. The people in the world are too many. 
the people in your world are too many. While you are trying to please this one, you displease that other one. While you are trying to bench the, this one, that other one is saying, what are you doing? Why do you prefer him above me? You can only please God and then leave the people. They are not the final decision makers over your life at the end. Please God and leave the rest in the hands of God. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Look at verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Look at verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong. Have not I commanded thee, be strong. If you don't look at that commandment, be strong, you might be doing uh, something uh, that is commendable, but you're doing it with half-heartedness. You're doing it with fear. You're doing it with feebleness. You're doing it for the praise of men. It will not be rewarded by God. Understand and stay with and stay by the commandment of the Lord. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Okay, the Lord my God is with me. He'll forever be with us in Jesus' name. He's stronger than our enemies. He's stronger than our persecutors. He's stronger than the people that put stumbling blocks before us. Before you get there, the Lord will take the stumbling block away from your path in Jesus' name. The Lord thy God is with thee. Matthew chapter 24. And I'm reading from verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. We who are preachers, pastors, evangelists, we have to take heed and to stand by the word of Christ because the tendency is well I know that man is a false prophet but we're evangelizing and we need to befriend everybody so that all the crowd he controls he will help us and link us with that crowd this one does not believe in salvation by grace through faith we know that we know what he says we know what he teaches we know it's a false prophet but you know we have to be wise in these days of crusade so that we'll be able to have a support they're not looking for the support of god alone and they do not believe that the work belongs to the lord we must have their consent and have their support so that they'll help us the false prophet will help us to get to the people and many false prophets shall rise i shall deceive many and then in verse 12 it says and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold verse 13 but he that shall endure unto the end there's no respect of persons with God. He that shall endure 
unto the end. There's no favoritism with God. He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I pray every one of us will endure to the end in Jesus' name. If you have started compromising, if you have started dropping your conviction, if you have started bending to the opinions of men, the Lord is calling you back and the Lord is saying, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men and be strong. I pray the Lord will keep every one of us strong in Jesus' name. Point number two now is the willingness to serve faithfully without falsehood. We're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. Do let all your things be done with charity. Remember, it's not let some of your things be done with charity. When you are happy, when you are excited, when everything goes your way, when everybody is pumping you up, when everybody appreciates you, let the things you do at that time of joy be done with charity and love. When you're expecting a raise, when you're expecting a great reward, when you're expecting a great appreciation, let what you do at that time be done with charity and love. No, every time, everywhere, however you feel, whatever you are personally going through, Whatever challenges you might have discovered around you, let all your things, whatever your emotion, whatever the pressure, whatever things that surround you, and whatever temptation or trial, and whatever fire may be burning around you, don't do anything out of hatred, out of envy, out of jealousy, out of malice, out of unchristlike character, every time, everywhere, as a Christian, every time, everywhere, as a true believer, every time, everywhere, anywhere, as a person standing for the Lord, as a, stand a person standing for the truth, as a person saved, as a person converted, as a person, a real child of God, as a person sanctified, as a person whose heart had been transformed, having the very mind of Christ. Everything you do, morning, afternoon, or evening, everything you do at home, in church, in the community, in the marketplace, everything you do, let all your things be done with charity. No matter what you do, if it is not of charity, it may be feeding the poor, but there's no love of Christ there. If there's no love of Christ there, it may be given drink to the hungry. If there's no love of God there, if it is giving food or drink to your enemy, I'll heap coals of fire upon his head. If the love of Christ is not there, all that will be charred, burnt away, and will have no reward and no record with God. But anywhere and everywhere. You're saved, you're sanctified, and the love of God fills your heart. With that love of God, you are propelled by the love of God. You are influenced by the love of God. You are acting on the basis of the love of God. Then let all your things, small or great, be done with love with charity, 
or Christ-like club. Look at three things here. Number one, doing all things in Christ-like love. Doing all things in Christ-like love. Number two, denouncing all things of Christless life. The things we do, unbelievers do that too, but you don't have Christ. You don't have salvation. You don't have hope of heaven. They don't have grace. They don't have faith in God. They, they, too, they give money to the beggars, not out of the love of Christ. They, too, they might even build religious sanctuaries for some worshippers. They don't do that out of the love of Christ. They have not known of Calvary. They have not known of Christ. You denounce all things of Christless life. Number three, daring all things. Now, it's not just that you do. You dare. You dare. There is a level, a measure of risk there. There is danger on the way. And there is problem on that side. But the Lord that said, you go and get that thing done. Lord, how about the Goliath on the way? Get it done. You dare, daring all things under Christ's lordship. Look at number one. Number one, doing all things in Christ-like love. In First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14, let all your things be done what charity? That charity, I'm sure you understand. Uh, the charity is the love of Christ in a saved heart, sanctified heart, in a life, in a heart that have been transformed by grace, by the grace of God. First Corinthians chapter 13, uh, I'm reading from verse 1. In First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, uh, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, whatever I do, in communication, and have no charity, I am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and do I have all faith to heal, to deliver, to solve problem, to move mountain? And do I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, Christ-like love, charity? I am nothing. Verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, you see that? give money to the beggars you give food to the hungry you give water to the thirsty you give help you give money to people who are poor and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be burnt the people who are so religious and they make themselves matters they say, yes, I'll die for it, for religion. I'll die for tradition. And then we want to change something in our community. And we're going to go out, no matter what happens, even if they kill me, I'm here. Those people that will endanger their lives and the love of Christ... It's not there, and they go out with hatred, and they go out with animosity, and they go out wanting to instigate other people to fight against everybody and destroy everything around. Though I give my body to be burnt and have not charity, it profited me nothing. He wants us to do all things by that Christ-like love in our hearts. What's that charity? Look at verse 4. 
it says charity suffers long and is kind suffering does not change the believer the man the woman of charity yes charity let all your things be done in charity of charity he suffers longer he suffers the indignation of the people the insult of the people the assault of the people he suffers longer and is kind charity envies i'm the only one suffering that person is a preacher too and he doesn't suffer like me and it's okay i know what he does he puts uh, he cuts off the sharp edges of the doctrine and the things that will bring a prick a people and pinch them he cuts it off all right if that is start to have an easy life and a life that the people will not persecute me again let me act like that that's not charity he envies not whatever others are doing however others are doing it a man a minister a member of the charity the love of god he says here is where i stand i stand with christ I stand in the gospel. I stand with the grace of God. And I don't envy the people who are not standing firm. And therefore they are changing. And they are not able to give up the real truth of the word of God. Charity envieth not. Charity wanteth not itself. Is not puffed up. And now in verse 5. Does not behave itself unseemly. Do all your things with charity, and you will not behave yourself unseemly. Seek it not her own. It's not seeking its advantage. I'm doing this, so I'll have that. I'm doing this, so I'll get that. I'm doing this, so they will pour this on me. He does not do that. He seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked he thinketh no evil and then in verse 6 it tells us rejoices not in iniquity but rejoices in the truth and then in verse 7 it says beareth all things that's charity believeth all things that's charity hopeth all things that charity endureth 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 all things if you're going to keep that salvation you endure all things that sanctification you endure all things if you're going to keep your conviction you endure all things if you're going to watch stand fast in the faith which you like men and be strong and be firm you'll endure all things i pray the lord Grant us abundant grace to do all things of Christ-like love in Jesus' name. And amen. amen. Number two now, denouncing all things of Christless life. Christless life. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17. This I say therefore. And testify in the Lord that she henceforth walk not, live not, speak not, dress not, eat not, drink not, behave not as all the Gentiles walk, live, dress, eat, drink as all the Gentiles behave in the vanity of their mind verse 18 in verse 18 they have the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts and then in verse 
Nigeria who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, unto defilement, unto immorality, unto iniquity, unto the superfluity of the naughtiness of worldly character, to walk all uncleanness with greediness. Look at verse 20. But ye have not so large Christ. Anything that is Christless, anything that supposed and contrary to the life of Christ and to the example that the Lord has given us, we shun them, we denounce them, we run away from them, and we detach ourselves from them. Number three here, in number three, daring all things under Christ's lordship. That word to dare, that means Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. Who can do that? Somebody who dares. You two spies, go to the land of Canaan and see how they do. See what kind of men are there and search out the land. For we are coming there. It takes somebody daring to go and do that. Here comes Goliath. And then he brags and he boasts before the army of Israel. And everybody, they were shivering. They were trembling and then they became to the battlefield and he saw the man defying the God of Israel and he says give me a man it takes somebody who can dare to say nobody else is willing to do it nobody is willing to crush this evil power I will that takes daring. Here is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. An idol has been raised up. And Nebuchadnezzar said, Anyone that will not bow to my idol, I'll take him and put him in the furnace of fire. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will not bow. That is daring. And then the Kadnesa called them and said, What am I hearing of you? That you will not bow down to my idol. Now I give you another chance. If at any time you hear the sound of the cornet, of the trumpet, of the dulcimer, and others are bowing down, you bow down. That's all right. I'll forget the past. But if not, who will deliver you out of my hand? Now, here is daring. O king, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to give you any answer. Go ahead. If you do that, our God, whom we serve, will deliver us out of your hand. He is able. That's daring. Now, they've looked at how they could catch Daniel, and they said, for these 30 days, O king, make an edict and make a law that whoever prays to any other god except you he'll be cast into the lion's den sign it seal it up and daniel knew that had been done and then he opened this window like he always did can you still preach the same thing like you have always done Stand the way you have always stood, believe and act the same way you have always acted when you know that those people are watching and they want to catch you and throw you into the lion's den. That's the daring we're talking about. The spirit that dares and the spirit that moves ahead to obey the Lord whatever is before us knowing that the almighty god the creator of the heavens and the earth is behind us the lord grant every one of us that spirit in jesus name 
You know, if you say weak, amen, you are not going to have the grace that they are. Daring all things under Christ's lordship. It tells us in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 3. Philippians chapter 2 verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife of inglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem all the better than themselves. Verse 4. It says, look not every man on his own things on his own gain, on his own promotion, on his own desires, but let every man also, let every man also, but every man also on the things of others. In verse 5, let this might be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, the might which was in Christ Jesus. He knew the Pharisees were looking for him. And he knew the Sadducees were getting. And he knew that they had even got a disciple that would betray him unto them. He didn't change his doctrine. He didn't change his lifestyle. He didn't change his ministry. It didn't change anything, even though they were looking for him, looking for him to destroy. But he had said, all things reaching concerning me shall be accomplished. And because he knew that, he knew that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sanhedrin and Judas and any other person cannot go beyond what have been ordained from the foundation of the earth. Have that same might in you, the might which was in Christ. And then you will watch, you will stand fast in the faith, you'll quit yourself like men. And you will be strong. You'll be strong in Jesus' name. Point number three now. In point number three, the warm-heartedness of submissive followers to the first fruits. You know, it's wonderful when we recognize our calling and then we do that with a loving heart, a warm heart. A cheerful heart, a sacrificial attitude. That's what the Lord expects that we'll have a warm heartedness as followers of Christ who are submissive, submissive to Christ, submissive to His Word, submissive to leadership, and submissive to the leading of the Spirit of God. Three things here. Number one, addiction to saints sacrificial ministry number two admiration of of soundly sanctified members and number three admonition for sincere submissive membership let's come to number one number one addiction to saints sacrificial ministry Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15. I beseech you, brethren, ye know, the service was not hidden, ye know, their commitment was not private, ye know, 
the sacrificial ministry in the midst of the church and outside the church it was not hidden you know the house of Stephanas that it is the first fruits of Achaia and that they have addicted themselves nobody forced them personal nobody forced them this was their priority nobody forced them they volunteered to do this it says they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints that to addict yourself to soul winning addict yourself to sacrificial service addict yourself to do what will bring salvation to more teachers and you do that voluntarily faithfully with all your heart wholeheartedly with real conviction and with real commitment addiction to saints sacrificial ministry it tells us in second corinthians chapter 4 reading from verse 1 second corinthians chapter 4 reading from verse 1 therefore seeing we have this ministry so winning this ministry preaching this ministry evangelization of the world this ministry edification of the church enlightening the ignorant helping the helpless seeing that we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not we do it we're getting tired we faint not we do it we're sweating we faint not we're doing it and the body is much and we faint not in verse 2 but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty cutting corners we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty patching up things we renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness in deceit in hypocrisy nor handling the word of god deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth commenting ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of god verse 18 in verse 18 while we look not at things which are seen the hurdles the thorn in the way the mountain in the way the harsh weather whatever we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen harsh weather difficulties fire pandemic the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal in colossians chapter 4 verse 17 colossians 4 verse 17 and say to archipels take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the lord that thou fulfill it you cannot fulfill it except you feel all your time you feel all your opportunity you feel all the calling come over to macedonia and help us go come over to philippi and to asia and to the province of galatia come over to the to the city of ephesus and help us you feel your time and you feel all your opportunities with the ability and the possibility of doing what you are called to do say unto archipels take it to the ministry don't take it to your convenience 
to your ease, to your luxury, to the advice of people, to the push of people. Take heed to the ministry that thou was received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. I pray you'll fulfill your calling in Jesus' name. Number two is the admiration of soundly sanctified members. You see, these people, the first fruits of Achaia, they addicted themselves because they had, they had a heart that was sanctified. In Romans chapter 11, verse 16, it says, For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy and if the root be holy so are the branches for you to addict yourself when there's no praise of man when there's no promotion coming from anywhere when there's no notice taking care uh, taking of you and you do everything as unto the lord that is the sanctified heart in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings and then in verse 11 for both he that sanctified is still doing it today. He that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. They have the same mind, all of one, the same heart, all of one, the same love, all of one, the same attitude of obedience unto the Lord. All of one, the same goal and the same ideal and the same underlying power, the power of the Holy Ghost. He who sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in you that they may be one in us and they were with one accord in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a wind all over the house and clothing tongues like a sapphire upon all of them and they were filled everyone they were all together saved and sanctified and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit had given them utterance both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one for the which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren the Lord accomplished that sanctification and that oneness in every one of our hearts in Jesus name number three now is the admonition for sincere submissive membership look at first corinthians chapter 16 verse 16 that ye submit yourselves unto such corinthians don't argue now i'm of paul i'm of apollos i'm of Severus, i'm of christ i don't know stephanas i don't know the house of stephanas I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to submit unto them. Corinthians were coming to the end of the epistle. And here is what you need to do by the Spirit of God. That ye submit yourselves unto such. And to everyone that helpeth with us. And laboreth. Admonition for sincere submissive membership hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves cheerfully voluntarily 
wholeheartedly, sincerely, without hypocrisy, and without playing any pranks, that ye submit yourselves for the watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit, don't rebel. Likewise, ye younger, submit, don't contradict. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. And the grace of God will abide with everyone in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, it tells us what ye, everything we've heard today, internalize everything, personalize everything, stand fast in the faith, which you like men be strong. And then in verse 14, do you let all your things be done with charity. And now in verse 15, I beseech you, I plead with you, brethren. You know the house of Stephanas, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. See the example. Follow that example. Addict yourself to the ministry. And then in verse 16, that ye submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. I pray the word of God will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. We need to take everything we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up now and take everything we learned today to the Lord in prayer. That the Lord, by His grace, in His strength, will help us, will be doers of the word, will not be hearers only.